going through so many conferences uh, which were completely and totally meaningless, including rabbinical conferences, which are absolutely great in having five, dived, five days, all rabbis coming together, having all sorts of discussions which go nowhere, <laughs> and in the end you have no clue why that conference took place, except that you paid a lot of money, and that it cost a lot of money to the rabbinical council, or whatever it is. Obviously there's a social element, and I think that's the main reason why these people come there. They meet their friends, and they are together, and it is nice to have a coffee together, but nothing has been achieved. Uh, I have seen this so many times over uh, not so long ago, I was here at a at big conference about Giyur, about uh, the question about conversion in the land of Israel, and you all know that this is a major issue over here. So there were some rabbis there, there were orthodox rabbis, reform rabbis, and they all had good things to say. But the audience, existing out of a few hundred people, mainly American Jews, uh, then on the end wanted to have a resolution of what needs to be done. So then they walk up to the microphone, and they tell us then what we need to do. They have not the slightest clue what they're speaking about. They have no understanding at all what the issues are involved. But this is part why they flew over from America. And I'm sure that they mean well and they want the best for the people of Israel. But the truth about this, you walk back, on, you walk out of this conference on the end and nothing has been achieved in any way. It is a way of entertainment in many, many ways. And that's a big part of our world. Same thing, by the way, is true about eating. A very interesting topic, eating. Yes, we eat. Hakadosh uh, Baruch could have created this also in the ways that we don't need to eat. But eating is one of our best entertainments. We sit together on the table, it is nice, <coughs> we schmooze, we uh, have uh, a nice time. <laughs> uh, the interesting thing about it is that Hakadosh Baruch Hu obviously could have created food which is nearly not edible, but he made nice tastes. He created a certain joy to it, and that is true about the sexual act, it is true about so many other things. And here comes a very interesting thing in, and that is on one side, we are kept busy with all these things, and at the same time there's a certain enjoyment which is created by the divine element over here that we enjoy this being kept busy with all these particular issues. And I'm not speaking only about halakha, I'm speaking about life in general, because there is really not so much of a difference there. Now, what the Sforno, as I mentioned last week, is suggesting, speaking back, speaking about the halakha, is basically saying, okay, you know what, um, this is indeed, God keeps us busy by creating problems in the halakha, and uh, we have to work them out, and that's the way how we live our lives, or how we should live our <coughs> religious life. That's, the, that's somehow the meaning of living a religious life. And then obviously you start to wonder, uh, and I, you know, I, I only bring up all these questions, not because I know to answer all of them, but I think they need to be put on the table, is that a very strange thing what God is doing over here. He is creating uh, problems for us. Um, the purpose is to solve them, uh, and, and that's the end of the story. That's basically what we are doing all the time, and therefore I think that when Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel in the Gemara and the Rubim in 13b, uh, Yud Gimel Amud Beit, uh, tells us about this incredible interesting story, and I think that it's a tremendous <coughs> pity that there was no tape recorder in these days or an MP3, that for two and a half years, Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel are discussing one major question, and that is, is it worthwhile being born, or is it better that we would not have been born? The Gemara tells us that for two and a half years they discussed that. Because we have nowhere any information as what they said. All what we know is that on the end they came to the conclusion that it is better not to be born, but now that you are there, you have to make the best out of it, and that is by doing what God asks you to do. Obviously, there's tremendous profundity behind that statement. What's going on over there? But why are they having this discussion? I think they have exactly that discussion that they wonder, what is this, and to use a word which we used last time, what is this game all about in which we find ourselves, from the moment that we are born to the moment that we are being 
uh, and we die again. Now, there is in the Kabbalah, there is a very, yeah, how shall I say, interesting but also strange uh, answer to this, and that is that we have to go <coughs> through this game with all its ups and its downs, because if we don't, then when we go up there after 120 years in Olamaba, we won't enjoy our reward. Because how can you enjoy reward if not at the same time you work for it? If there is, there cannot be, so says the Kabbalah, there cannot be any reward, there cannot any be in enjoyment, any simcha, unless you did your hishtadalut, you were actually working for it. I must be honest, I have been sitting on that Gemarao better on that piece of Kabbalah for a long time and I don't really know how it works because is this enough of a reason to somehow justify life by saying well since we after 120 years have to come up there and we should not be in the condition that everything is given there everything to us on a silver plate we better have to work for it because then when I go up there I can make a claim and I can say I have deserved it. I think this is only a very partial answer. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's a very partial answer. And the question which is obviously a very difficult question to answer, Michel will go into now, is the question about why can't you enjoy something which you don't deserve? Why is that the need to deserve something always a condition before you can enjoy it. If Akados Baruch would have created different conditions, all of this would not have been the case. In any way, as Gila also mentioned last week already, we can never use this as a kind of explanation of why things are sometimes as bad as they are. Uh, you know, to say that uh, people in the Holocaust died in Auschwitz and in Dachau and all these places of Jafra, wherever it is, Vietnam, uh, in, in the terrible conditions so that on the end after 120 years they will get the reward over there is a very difficult one and remember uh, and I want you to be well aware, very well of it I didn't bring that argument as a kind of uh, justification for what was happening in the world my question is why is it that it is like that and I'm not thinking about what they, they call theodicy and that is trying to solve the problem of God and evil in this world, which is a whole issue on itself, which perhaps I will come back to later on when we speak more about Halakha, but in any way, um, it is a very difficult thing here. We are placed here in this world, we have to make the best out of it, uh, in according to the Machloket between Ben Shammah and Beit Hillel, it would be better if we would not be there, and um, Straight away the question comes up, why not commit suicide? Imagine that there is a way how we could commit suicide, which is famous, uh, that would make an end to all our troubles or our all potential troubles. And um, the strange <coughs> thing about this is that, I hope so at least, that nobody of us is even thinking about this. Even when it would be so easy and even when the law would permit us, there seems to be something within man who tells him there is something about this life, I can't put my finger on it, there's something about this life, call it kudusha, sanctity, whatever name you give it, there is something there which I don't want to miss out. I'm always flabbergasted and, and deeply impressed when I see people uh, here in Israel, but you see them in America, you see them in Europe, who are popers, they're sitting in the street, they are snorers, they don't have a place where to go to, they don't have a home, they don't have really anything to eat, and what are they doing? They're collecting a little bit of, of money so that they will continue to stay in exactly that same condition. And they know this quite, quite well. They're not getting out of it. They are eating so to continue to snore, right? So what is the purpose here? Is the snoring the purpose or is the eating the purpose? And, but if you would ask these people, I've done this on several occasions, uh, why don't you think about uh, making an end to it? Then they look to you and they say to you, how do you get to that? Uh, I, I will do anything to stay alive. For what reason? For what reason? To continue to live under those conditions which are absolutely inhuman and which is not a human life, it has lost 